psychology. It's more than a philosophy, more than a psychology, more than just an ecology, bigger than biology, larger than anthropology, brushes against astrology. That's prophecology. Who do we have here with us today? We have Aretha Simmons. Um, Simon. Sim I'm sorry. I said. You know what? I saw. Everybody does it. I saw. Everybody does Every, it. Since I, I was a little girl, everybody <laughs> does it. Yep. Simon. Like Simon said. Like Simon's. Like Simon says. And I saw that. And Simon did say <laughs> that this is Miss Aretha. Yes. Aretha is a retired Navy veteran and a former Orlando mayoral candidate. She is the author of The Power of the 501c3, The Best Guide for Nonprofit Consultants, and Deadly Force, C Force Recall. Aretha holds a Bachelor's of Theology from Life Christian University and Seminary a Bachelor's of Business Management from the University of Phoenix, and a Master's of Education from Nova so Southeastern University. As a president of Multiplying Talents and a national speaker, some of her clients include SCORE, Disney National Entrepreneurial Center, Life Christian University, Nova Southeastern University, Rollins College, Florida Association of Christian Colleges, Latina Style Business Conference, African American Chamber of Commerce, University of Central Florida Business Incubator, Bishop T.D. Jakes International Pastors and Leaders, and the United States Department of Labor, just to name a few. Aretha Simons has a 100% success rate of obtaining the 501c3 status and is, a one, and is one of the most sought after experts for setting up non-profit corporations. Aretha has also been a professional grant writer for over 15 years. Her clients were rewarded or awarded government, state, and local grants. She is a formal grant reviewer for the city of Orlando's mayor, mayor's matching grant, Central Florida United Way, and the Minority Women's Entrepreneurial Business Grant. Aretha was given an all-expense-paid trip courtesy of media mogul Oprah Winfrey, to speak on the U.S. Senate floor concerning funding for non-for-profit organizations. Aretha offers non-for-profit 501c3 preparation, grant writing, professional life, and business coaching. Aretha's life's mission is to share her gifts to help others multiply their talents to become successful. Wow, let's give a hand for Aretha Simons. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. wow. So, uh, Aretha, uh, this is really amazing. You've uh, So tell us, where were you born? I was born in Arcadia, Florida, just about 100 miles from here, Orlando. So you are a real Floridian. I mean, like, you yeah, know, you yeah. meet very few. Most people, like, transit. I mean, right, you're right. a real Floridian, Floridian. Born and raised, yeah. Born and raised here. And um, so your father came from here as well, and your parents, mm -hmm. and your grandparents. Yes. All native wow. Floridians. Wow. Yes. Have y'all been able to trace back in terms of um, the slave trade or do anything and work in your family in terms of your history? Yes, yes. My great-great-grandfather, um, he was one of the, well, his grandfather was a slave, but he was one of the ones that would take sap from the trees and they would use that for fuel. Mm -hmm. But he wow. would talk about, you know, how they were treated and they owned a lot of land and how he saved his money and, you know, paid for his land little bit by little bit. But eventually, of course, it was taken in minute domain. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You know, this is so, you know, there's so much history here in, um, 
because uh, I'm reading this book called The Great Migration. Mm, yes. And it talks about how people left the South, and um, not because they wanted to, but because they like had to in order to find a better life. And how in some of these communities, they were really developing as communities. But of course, the powers that be, and they actually in this book calls it caste system. They talk about the American caste system yes. that black people were like the lowest on Absolutely. this particular caste system in America, and especially in the South. So black people are leaving the South to get out of the caste system just to have a better life because so many opportunities they were locked out of. Wow. Wow. I thought that was... Yeah. That's, I mean, but that's so true. When you look at um, even like India, the country, their caste system and how it's broken down mm -hmm. in the system, when you look at America, yes. book suggests, African Americans, even when it comes to other immigrants, mm -hmm. um, because everyone at one time was an immigrant, Irish, yeah. uh, they were immigrants, Germans, Germans everyone Italians, was. Italians, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. However, Black people who, who didn't get a chance, didn't get an invitation, didn't come here seeking anything, are the lowest yep. of that immigrant cycle. And it's not that they were the lowest because they couldn't do it. When we did build, like, Rosewood, mm -hmm. Florida, and other mm -hmm. places, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wall Street, when they did build there, there's towns down or deconstructed what we built as a community to make sure that they became a permanent underclass. Yes. Intentional. That's why I was I was in a room um, with some people who explained how they did in Chicago. African Americans who were wealthy, they wouldn't let people know what they were doing because if the you know Caucasians knew what they were doing, they would stop them. They would find a way to stop them, yes. whether it's through politics or whether it's through burning them down. So a lot of times, you know, we don't know, we don't know, but a lot of times people do things behind the scenes. And yes, we yes. always at the bottom cast. Yes. That is so powerful because. Um, I think it's an inherent conversation in the um, the African American community about you don't tell nobody your business, okay? Um, uh, keep it to yourself. This is family business. Don't take it out because of the fear yes. and the not knowing if I do tell, then something gonna happen or it's gonna get back. And you didn't know who to trust and who not to trust. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's powerful. Because even people with our same you would end up betraying us Absolutely. because they may have had black skin, but they had a different type of consciousness that was also part of the deconstructing or part of the, um, the colonizer's system to maintain colonization that was taking place among our people. And so today, we have Black Lives Matter screaming in the street because this is really could be a subclass system crying out. Hey, hello. I break, break me out of this box. I do not want to be confined because of the color or really any of these, these constructs, these functionalities. Yes. Um, because it's not even just a call out of color, but it's even, for some, a call out of gender. Mm -hmm. Not to say that um, uh, someone is for being a, a pro-male or female or whatever, but I don't want to be categorized by that. Yeah. Because when you say, I'm a man, you've already limited to me only, this is what men do. Um, we've been having this conversation um, especially in millennial rooms, about um, someone wrote a man having a a birthday dinner is is gay. They're saying like that's a gay thing to do for men to have a. So wow. I said, now wait a minute, wait what? Mm -hmm. But what they what what people do is they try to categorize and make men particularly seem. Uh, wrong for expressing themselves, or if I'm over communicative, then oh, you're emotional and you must. So, these boxes and all that. So, now people are saying, take it all out. Mm -hmm. I don't want any box. You're not because I'm a man doesn't mean I can say this or I have to do this. 
if I'm, a, if I'm black, does it mean I have to dress this way or I can't speak this way? Take all the boxes off. Well, you know, I had someone this morning that says, Bishop George, I want you to consider something. It says, um, we heard you on Larry Reed last night. And, and I, I thought this was very interesting. They says, um, you were asked the question, is fornication a sin? And um, I says, well, you know, sex should be within marriage. And they says, you know, one of the things you may want to look at and consider is that what is sex? Because in today's world, when we think of sex, we mm -hmm. think automatically heterosexual. Mm -hmm. So in today, we may need to redefine what sex is. What sex is, matters. because there's so many different fluid, I mean, so many different relationships that people are having that it opens up a world of a new conversation. Mm -hmm. Because if it can only happen between a man and a woman, then is there, is that sex outside of heterosexual? Because that's the way we've kind of defined it in the church. Mm. Well, you, well, I think it's interesting that you're saying, though, Within the confines of marriage, because you can be married and be homosexual. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can say, if I'm married to my, if I'm married to my partner, that's within the confines Fines of marriage. marriage. Right. So it's then okay, and it's not. Right. So you have to again define what is marriage. Right. And and, and, and you know, I think. I, I'm and who defines this, what marriage who, is? That it's the who. Yeah. Who is the who? And we don't have answers. And we don't have answers for any of this. I mean, we can give you a biblical um, colonizing that answer, but this is something that I believe is going to take thought leaders to come together, because our whole institution of marriage has been actually reconstructed within the last ten years or so. Absolutely. You know. So we heard your resume. You ran for mayor. Um, what? had you to have a desire to get into politics? Well, I didn't have a desire, really. Um, and and it's, it's complicated. I won't say it's complicated. When I tell people this, um, you can't always say God said, because mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. But really, it was a call from God to do it. Um, I was living in Virginia, you know, in, in the military, and, mm -hmm. and I heard God say, go to Orlando. That's your land of promise. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. A couple of years later, you're going to run for mayor. Um, this is this is your city. So I'm like, I laughed about it. I ran for city commissioner, lost. Ran for city commissioner again, lost. Because I thought I need to run for city commissioner so I can learn the mechanics of the politics. So, but I didn't think anything about it. It didn't phase me one way or another when I lost. So when I was on the airplane traveling back from California, I was sleeping. I was knocked out. So I knew it was God. And I woke up singing this song, um, the prayer of Jabez, enlarge mm -hmm. my territory. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm on the airplane because I was like, what? I know I'm getting ready to have an encounter with God. So what are you going to say? Because I could hear, I was like singing loud, not mm -hmm. like so the whole wow. plane can hear. But I said, I know the person next to me and behind me can hear me singing. And all of a sudden, I heard God say, I need you to run for mayor. And I'm like, oh my God, it took me out of the spirit. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Mm. Um, and a couple days later, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I told my family I didn't want to tell a whole lot of people because I didn't want to get people's thoughts and ideas in my head. And it was like, okay, well, we're with you. And then I heard that the current mayor was running again. He had already been in the seat for 16 years. And I was like, he's going to run again? I was like, there's no way that I could be him. So, God, I, I heard what you said, but I don't think it's my season. And the next day, my blood pressure dropped so low that I had to be taken to the hospital in the ambulance. And I was like... I'm a healthy person, so I said, okay, what you trying to say to me, God? Mm. I told you to run for me. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I ran. Um, you couldn't have told me I wasn't going to win because God said, and then I lost. And I'm like, I, didn't, I wasn't, like, down or depressed about it, but I was like, okay, God, you up to something because I know you wouldn't have had me go through this and me lose. So, you know, that was, like, over a year ago now. But, you know, it's very interesting. When Reverend Sharpton came to us, and this was back in the 1990s or so. 
And he said, um, I'm going to, um, I'm consider doing something. And I says, well, what is it? He says, I'm consider running for um, mayor. And I said, okay, you're going to run for mayor. I said, great. I said, um, we prayed. And I says, the Lord said for you to, to run mm -hmm. for mayor. And um, you, won't, you won't win, but God is going to use this as a door. He went and ran, and of course he did not win. And then he came back later on, and he said, um, I'm coming to seek out the prophet again. I mm. says, what? He says, I'm, I'm going to run for president. Mm. And I says, um, the word of the Lord came. I said, the Lord said, run, because of where he's about to take you. He's taking your voice across the nation. Mm. <laughs> and he ran on the prophet's word. Wow. wow. And then the word of the Lord came. My wife prophesied to him also on a number of occasions how he would become the darling of media, how he would go in and out of the White House. Now, we didn't know that him running and losing would allow him to be able to consult Barack Obama Come on. and become like a forerunner, mm -hmm. but God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has and so I want to say this to encourage you. You don't know what, and I know you already know this, what door watched you or who you've impacted in that mm -hmm. journey wow. and in that process. Mm -hmm. Because what looks like naught, you'll hear somebody come back later on and say, we made a decision because we were looking that changed our entire business wow. practice. Yeah. And that's what God does. Sometimes God puts us in position not to get the position, but put us in position ah, just to have the notoriety of the moment yes. because he wants your voice to be echoed. I mean, look at Joseph. Look at what Joseph went through, that he had to go from the pit, prophet and training, the three Ps of Joseph, the pit, Potiphar, and prison, mm. in mm. order to get to the fourth P, <laughs> to the palace, <laughs> to become what? The prime minister. Ooh. Sometimes you got to go through four P's before you can get to your prime. Yes, my goodness, yes. that's good. You know, wow. I was I was laughing yeah. because I was say I could have went to prison. You know, yes. I told you about the situation, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I ran with integrity, and so God is good. God is faithful. And yet you're able to watch some of the things that God mm. did in that thing, and then God gave you a glimpse or a look what happens behind the scene in politics. Oh my God! So you yes. can understand the construct and the structure of how people make decisions and whole groups are impacted from the decision of one person mm -hmm. or one law that gets changed. One person, yep. I learned so much. I learned, I got into rooms I would never ever get in had I not ran for mayor. So that was an eye opener for me. Um, I met people I would have never met. Um, and even the people who were friends, close friends with the mayor would come and share secrets with me. So I was like, wow, it's wow. true what that song says, two can keep a secret if one of them is dead because they were telling everything. Yeah, no. Jesus. Yeah. And the Bible says, you know, everything that is done in secret will come to light. Mm -hmm. right. it's a, and you got to just be prepared. Yes. Um, and that's why I tell people, says, I'll tell it before you will. I know, that's right. Because if, you, if you can kind of, you got to get yourself so clear that if you can get clear, you can sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very powerful. So uh, we know that, um, how did you come to meet us here at Zoe Ministries? Through uh, watching Larry Reed. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Let's give Larry Reed a hand. Let's give Larry Reed a hand. We love Larry Reed. You know, um, Larry Reed has done so much for this ministry that the half would not be able to be told. I was telling my wife not too long ago, I said, you know, I said when I had um, a natural son that denied his father on the national stage, and I've had clergy that people we raised up that betrayed us. Mm -hmm. God raised up someone like a Larry Reed at his lowest point to say, 
I'm connecting with the prophet. Mm. And I was not looking for sons. Larry says, you are my father. I says, Larry, I says, you're my younger brother. He says, stop that younger brother stuff. Says, you are my father. I'm, this is where I'm submitting. And then I was mm. like, wow, Larry, this is not what we're... And Larry took it upon himself as an assignment from God to say, they have really branded you incorrectly. Mm. Mm. And began to tell the story of the prophet and just kept talking about us on this platform and brought so many great people like yourself here, um, like the Ala Brujos, um, who work with our young people at the investment yeah. team, yeah. Rosalind Williams. There's so many people, great people that have been used in this ministry to sustain us like yourself in this ministry. And many, and all of them were unchurched. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were like, walked away, like they, 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 yep. they, they had done it with church. I had left, I was wow. done. I had left, <sighs> I, I had left, um, I don't know, it, I, I was, it was in February. I called my pastor, who I love dearly. Mm -hmm. um, he was on another call, so I was talking to his wife, who I love dearly. I was like, uh, Ted Pastor, I'm not coming back. I'm going to take a break. I'm going on a sabbatical, but I don't think I'm coming back. She said, I don't know you tell him. And, uh, mm -hmm. so, and I, um, I was like, okay, hung up the phone. He called me back. I wouldn't answer the phone. I was like, because I know he's going to talk me coming back. <laughs> but I was done. Um, wow. And even before I had went to that church. I was part of that church for 12 years. I was done. Mm. And, but um, God connected me with them and I, and I knew there was connection and Thank you, you know, he said, you know, we need you. I was able to do a lot of things. Not, not as much as I felt like I could, mm -hmm. um, but when I was watching Larry Reed um, and you came on and you just pricked my heart. So I said, well, I'm going to go on this call line. And I go, I went on the call line, and I could not go to sleep. I was on the, the call line like for hours and hours and wow. hours, just wow. taking it all in and soaking it in. And then God would just start speaking to me, and I would start having dreams and visions. Um, then I start sewing, and your prophecy and everybody else's prophecy is on point. And I'm just like, okay, this is this is the real deal. And I've just been connected ever since. Wow, let's wow. give that a hand. Wow. What a role. And, and this is why we ask for, you know, um, you to sponsor two of the prophets for the birthday celebration that may, yeah, that cannot come, that yeah, may be on the wall, right? Uh, for whatever reason or set of circumstances, mm -hmm. get a ticket for two of the prophets because we want to see to get every one of the prophets to the Master Prophets birthday celebration that want to come and are able to come. We want you to begin to have a pathway that we don't want money to be the showstopper. And so many people are sponsoring them. And they're not sponsoring them because I'm asking. They're sponsoring them because they've gotten a word from these people that don't know them. Yes. The, I mean, I was there with Larry yesterday he said, oh, this is Zoe calling me. He said, we were in the last show. And I said, I said, you must have sowed a seed. He says, well, yeah, I did. And I says, it's good to hear that because there is no seed that goes unanswered at Zoe Ministry. And it took a lot for us to begin to put that kind of a system together mm. and to train up these prophets. And we kept getting attacked after attack after attack. You know, that we were selling prophecies, that we were whatever they, whatever they could throw yeah. at us. And sometimes what people would do, especially your oppressors, Sometimes what they'll do, Aretha, Prophetess Aretha, is they'll throw the spaghetti against the wall, know that you wasn't you, it wasn't deserving to be thrown at, mm. and then apologize to wipe the stain off, but you'll never get the white spaghetti stain. You'll never get the spaghetti stain off the white garment. And they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, but you left a stain. My, my, my. And there have been Jesus. ministries and clergies that have thrown stuff at us, knowing better. Mm -hmm. And yes. some of the says, now you know that's not Just the truth. Just to promote themselves. 
but they used it just to leave a stain. Yes. And there'll be people in your life that will show up wow. just to leave a stain, knowing the truth. Good wow. Point. Yeah. That's, That's great. Good. Oh. That's true. Knowing the truth. Mm. And we'll apologize. But the stain is still there. But the stain is still there. Wow. Wow. Fall on their knees and kiss my wow. ring with tears the in their eyes and said, I am so oh. sorry, Prophet. I have betrayed you. Yes, but the stain is still there. The stain, the stain is still there. Wow. Is still there. Wow. Because you can't go back and tell everyone you gave misinformation to mm -hmm. that it was wrong and you got to live with the stain. Wow. Can I say something? Who would have thought that you would have been here in Orlando and I would meet y'all after being on that call for how many days? It's been like 400 some days. 420. Let's see. <laughs> Prophet Stephen, how many days have we been on the revival call? Master Prophet, 400, 428. 428. 428. Well, let's give that a hand. 428 days of revival. Since COVID, and yet you were on there. So many people we hear that is on those calls. Mm -hmm. And then who would have thought that you would be here at our suite yeah. on talk? Yes. But you know what? It was social media. And thank God for Jonathan posting and Danielle doing the um, filming. And hey, Master Chef, I think that's what you saw. Yes. As it said, we're here in Orlando. Yes. And I kept thinking, I said, who wow. I know in Orlando? I said, because, you know, usually when we come in places like this, we like to meet up with different partners. We did it when we went to Georgia. We met up with some people, and um, we, we, you know, the, the private plane stopped over. We stopped over and seen some people, and then we was able to see my um, mom, Pastor Deborah's mother and my mother-in-law. First time since COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then it was like something to yeah. live in, because then her sister was down there that, Flown, had flown in. This was not planned. This yeah, was like last was minute, mm -hmm. and, you know. And then um, her siblings came to see her over. She had a very uh, eventful, um, real week uh, weekend. And your mother's about seventy. Uh, she'll be. She's seventy. Eight. 78, wow. doing well. Yes, She'll be 78. And then to see Pastor Deborah's sister come from death doors knocking. I mean, wow. death doors knocking. I mean, this is. Um, 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 Pam should not be. That she was should so not powerful. be. The doctor she, gave her less than a year to live. Wow. But you, I never shared this with you. Um, once we got the news, um, it was on a Sunday morning. I was in the office. Pastor, I was in prayer. And he said, I don't know what this means. He said, uh, tell Pastor that the angel is going north. The angel is, go is going north. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know the whole situation, but God knew. Mm -hmm. And her sister and lives she, north. She lives wow. north. She lives like maybe 70 miles north of me. And God did it. She was down there. And uh, she's still in state of recovery, but she's moving about. That's beautiful. And she had a sore that would have, she, she says, look, she says the sore has healed. It was a mm -hmm. rare Disease. She showed a picture. Mm. Of CDC. Yeah. Wow. She showed wow. a picture. But they were calling her name mm. on that 12 midnight, midnight prayer every Hallelujah. night. Wow. Yes. And she had so many different hospitalization last year. Doing COVID. She even caught COVID. If anyone should not have gotten COVID, she should not. She should be the last one to get it. Because if she got it, we just knew. But God sustained it. She was like almost like asymptomatic. But after the COVID, she had um, the, the after effects of wow. it, and it affected her lungs, mm -hmm. and her heart got even worse. So it was just crazy. And they would deal with that infection that was going throughout her body. CDC, she to see, it was just crazy. So many things. But mm -hmm. God. My God. But God. But God. But God. And to look at her standing yeah. on her own Ooh, and walking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what this is. A, it, 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 it was just. I had to ask Pastor because I didn't dawn on me. I said, I passed away. Because I'm like, you ain't got but this many, so, so many sisters. Mm. Well, what sister is this? Because you, you wouldn't have known from the way she was moving yeah, that, that she was nice. she had been that sick at any point in time mm -hmm. other than she had pictures to say here's the proof mm -hmm. that this was what it used to look like wow Un let me tell you something and she has the scars but yet the scars yet but she's healed 
Yeah, God. And so we began to watch so many um, people get miracles. Now, you're a walking miracle as well because your career has shifted again, hasn't it? Yes. Glory. Yes. I mean, because I remember you got a part of the coaching program. Mm -hmm. You were doing the work and assignment. I know, and the, and the work was designed to be overwhelming. <laughs> yes. Right. The reason the work is, is I only coach twelve people a year. Uh, I had somebody come to me. I had two, one, two. I had three people get in contact with me. Said, um, "We need to be. I want to be a part of the coaching." I says. It's 50000 They said, what happened to the 30000 trial price? I said, there's no more. I said, that was then. I says, we have so moved forward. I said, I'm only coaching people at 50000 They says, I want the thirty. I said, no, you knew about this three years ago. It's fifty. They said, I want, I, I, I can't do the fifty. I said, then you're not ready for your new life. Mm. Because it's the, it, it's the sacrifice you make Yes. That determines the greatness that you're going to come into, ah, good, good. and um, and 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 it and it's a and, and it's a stretch, and I know that um, when you step towards this, it was as a stretch at a most critical time in your life, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was such a stretch that I felt the stretch, mm. but in the process of it, you went and reached for a future that you didn't know that you was going to grab, mm. because there's no, everyone that we coach ends up getting a future that can't be predicted. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Hey, it, can't be, it, can't, it can't be predicted. Thank you, Jesus. It just, it's like a, and see, if it can be predicted, it's not the future. It's just the past we live, wow, Jonathan. Wow, wow. The future is something that you reach. And like, uh, you know, to hear people like Elder Brandt and I says, come follow me. I want you to go to school. Thank you. It's okay. And he Thank did. You. Um, he did, and who would have ever thought that he would be leading, he would be a professor at Virginia Union. He would be leading the choir and taking the choir overseas, yes. right? Um, he got all of his retirement from 17 years of teaching in the educational system. Now, because he has his earned master's degree for retirement. Who would have ever thought, but he had the fall what backwards that? and trust the word of the prophet and reach towards a future yeah. and future grab on. Future. He had to grab on what the world spins on, an imaginary axis. He had to reach towards yes. imaginary. What, is, what does the prophet see that I don't see? Let me reach. And so um, uh, what has the Lord done for you since? It hasn't even been a year. It hasn't even been a year. You kept saying technology, mm. you kept saying that a lot to me. And then when you said venture capitalist, I'm like, venture capitalist? When am I going to meet venture capitalists? And here you are, a grant, just a grant writer, right? Yeah, right. I just, know, just, but just, you know what I'm Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's different being a grant writer, finding grants from other people, than me meeting a venture capitalist. I'm thinking, what? I don't have anything that I want a venture capitalist to do right now, but... I've been in the nonprofit sector for 21 years, and I was a community organizer for a company called TechSoup. It's called TechSoup.org, and they're a <laughs> global company. They're in 43 different countries. Um, every wow. major corporation that has technology donates their technology to TechSoup, so then they can either give it away to nonprofits through donation or a, you know a discount fee. So um, I was interviewing somebody on one of my um, my monthly events that I do for TechSoup. Mm -hmm. And the organizer who lives in Canada, he was watching me. He said, you know, there's a position that I think you'd be great for. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to work for nobody. You know, <laughs> it, it's part time. It's part time and it's flexible. So I was like, eh. I'm sure a lot of people are going to apply for it because I heard people in the chat room and we, in the Slack room talking, oh, I might apply for it. They got like 220 applications. So I applied for it. And I didn't think about it, and I got a call from them, went through the four interview process, got offered the position. I'm not an employee of TechSoup. I'm an independent contractor, so they're paying my business to do this. And what I, all I get Thank to you, do Jesus. is interview all these different tech companies. Jesus. Microsoft, Dell, um, <sighs> Zoom, anybody Jesus. who has technology. I get to interview them and talk about how they use it and how people can use it to help nonprofits. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that 
that is out there. A lot of this is free. You can get 10 free Microsoft accounts. There's so You can get Zoom at half price. Um, the vice president of the company said, hey, Aretha, I need you to um, put a, a, a webinar together for some venture capitalists that we want to, <laughs> that we want to pitch what? to. Jesus. And he Jesus. said, no I way. already told them to come when they come to this meeting to bring their checkbook because I need $4 million. So um, I'm in the room with all these people, people from Microsoft, people from you know Zoom and all these other tech companies. I get to hear their pitch. I learned so much. Mm. Jesus. I was like, oh, so this is how they do So at the end of the meeting, remember he only wanted $4 million. He got $11 million from one person. Whoa. 11 million. And I mean, that's just not the half of it. They're getting 200 billion from different people. There is, the money is just coming. And there's so many tech companies who are giving money to them to, you know, promote their product. Um, if I can DocuSign, there's so, like I said, there's so many. I, uh. I start listing them. Everything that you use um, down to your cell phone, it is going through tech. So it's kind of like a, uh, Amazon mm -hmm. for okay. for nonprofits, if you will. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if you need anything, if you need any kind of software, hardware, um, mm -hmm. even your remote box to have um, Wi-Fi if you're mm -hmm. in a remote area, that's like nineteen dollars. So everything that has to do with technology, it flows through TechSoup. And I mean, if you're a nonprofit, five hundred one c three, then you can get your membership. It's free to apply. But now they're getting ready to do something different. I heard you mention Black Lives Matter. A lot of people don't realize Black Lives Matter is not a 501c3. No. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter is a movement, and there are lots of companies who are fiscal sponsors who use okay. their money mm -hmm. to push Black Lives Matter because yeah. they have other agendas to Yeah, good. Come on now. <laughs> you better go ahead. See, 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 see what God has done yeah, with you. Yes, yes. No. So, I mean, there there are so many other companies, like I said, who are fiscal sponsors of nonprofits who now they're going to be coming through TechSoup and be able to buy the computers and all mm -hmm. the softwares they need um, through TechSoup. That's true. Yeah. That's powerful. That yeah. is so powerful. Yeah. And, you know, powerful. Um, and this is like a dream come true because to watch God take you from, that did not exist before this. Mm -mm. Wow. But you were you were yeah. doing the coursework yes. and you were doing your work. Yes. You even got your book done mm -hmm. and everything. You were doing all the work, and you were just moving blindly. All you all, all you know is that it looks like you were just out of thirty grand. Says, oh my goodness, I I'm, I'm out of thirty grand. I'm out of thirty 35. grand. Thirty five grand. <laughs> yes. I'm out of thirty five grand and counting, right? Yes. But I, I got I got hooked up with this. Only to know that you're reaching, you reach into something that said, yeah. whoa, Jesus. gave you not so only, much. didn't give you a check, but gave you a new career. Yes, a new career. Oh. Basically, I am the face of TechSoup. That's what I'm I, talking God about. Is good. Yeah. God is good. <laughs> that's the power of prophecy. That's the power of prophecy. That's yes. That's power. Power. yes. You know, to hear your story is what keeps me going oh my God. stories like this and I know you're gonna you, you're gonna be in a testimonial journal and all that because you're part of the um, the circle and the coaching program but this here becomes such a powerful moment mm -hmm. because who would have ever thought I would have never dreamed that. I would have never dreamed that. I said all I want to do is help nonprofits and share information. Anytime I get information about something, I always put it out. But now I get to put it out on a global scale. When I'm doing the webinars, people mm. from Africa, people from um, Russia, China, Japan, all these co countries are coming on, you know, to the webinars to to watch me facilitate. And a lot of people are like, oh, she's black, you know. Yeah. People are texting me, oh, I didn't know, you know, because they're used to it's seeing a, other faces yeah. on. And Twilio and all these different companies, if I start naming them, so I'm finding out who has money. A lot of them have money that people don't know about. But when they come on our platform, they say, oh, yeah, we have grants that we're giving to nonprofits for, you know, if you have a test in COVID site, mm -hmm. that's millions of dollars we can give you. I mean, it's just so much. There's so much money out there. And one of the things that we were, we were looking into is that, I have wanted to do it. I was trying to do it. We was working on getting. And we had someone look into it, but we didn't like what we didn't like what they were they, they weren't offering much of anything. 
but we were working on for the, because we went into the Verbella platform. Mm -hmm. And you know the digital divide is really great among our people. Yes. Black people do not have the resources or have access mm -hmm. to this. And you'd be surprised at how much um, um, that there's almost like digital gentrification going on. That's a good word for it. Right? And this, so while black people are still on television, Wow. Other people of other you has moved to the new frontier. Yeah. yeah. They moved yeah. to the yeah. next gold yeah. rush. Yeah. And technology has become the liquid gold. Technology yes. is the liquid gold. And now cloud is, you have to be on. on the cloud. You have to shift to the cloud. <laughs> They're raising billions of dollars for everybody to shift to the cloud. And if you're not familiar with the cloud, come to TechSoup because um, Microsoft is giving um, people, or I would say people, nonprofits, free cloud, you know, accounts. Yeah. So. So what we were doing, so when we did the Rebella platform, which I know you've enjoyed yes. and loved, right? Yes. We noticed a lot of people didn't have the, the computers to mm -hmm. get on. We were we were doing our research, but we oh. couldn't get what we needed because we were looking for 400 computers. Wow. Well, I need 400 computers because I was going to give to every one that was wow. in the Co uh, not the coaching, everyone that was a part of the blessing plan, mm -hmm. I was going to have a computer shipped to their door. Wow. That's what, that's what, that's what we, were, we were working wow. on. It. We were working on it for like six months, and we just couldn't get, a, we couldn't get lead way into that door. Well, now come through TechSoup. Woo. And there's also a, a grant right now. It's a $10,000 grant. And see, this is not on the website for everybody to see. It's just that you behind the scene, you know about it. So I will send you the link. It's a $10,000 grant for you to buy technology from them. So you use that money to buy technology, which you can use to buy computers. We're, we're buying yes. technology. So we're always buying, always buying technology. And we gave away... Um, mm. uh, well, well, we gave to all the children in the children's right. church. Wow. We gave all wow. of them a computer for Christmas, and then we gave some computers out to some of the some of the members. We gave computers to people. I mean, the church don't know this, um, but we gave computers to people that were going to school and got into school and had everything, wow. and then realized they didn't have a computer to be able wow. to do the coursework wow. online. So we just went and you know we gave computer to them and um, and we gave computers to so many different people mm -hmm. and um, mm. families that we were shocked that was still working and it's not wrong with the cell phone because cell phone has become the computer it today, is. but that they needed to get their reports out and where families are like mm -hmm. you know three and four kids are like all yeah. using yeah. the one computer yeah. wow. in the home. This is some of the stuff that's really going on in our communities yeah. that we're right. really looking at. We, yes. we, yeah. So we were trying to see how the blessing plan can lower the impact of what was happening. And so, mm. um, and this is funny that you mentioned this because uh, um, 15 years ago, mm. I spoke to Reverend Sharpton, and I said, Reverend Sharpton, this was at, this 15 years ago, this before. I says, I, I said, we need. I said, you need to get. In, I said, we need to get in touch with Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. And he said, for what? I says, well, let's get a meeting with Bill Gates, so that we can turn every black church into a technology center. Wow. This was 15 years ago. Wow. It not, we couldn't get the meeting together. Wow. And he said, and I says, because our people are not going to be ready for the future, but our black churches are closed Monday through Friday. Right. But if they can get them involved in technology, it will keep the membership working yes. and keep the education going in technology. Yes. Now look what we have today. Wow. Yep. Everybody's using technology online. Um, I, I would love if we could put together a conference because they asked me to reach out to the black community. They mm -hmm. need to see people like us um, oh, to, okay. you know, tell them about technology and especially churches. We could do pastors and leaders oh, or anybody. Consider that yes, done. Yes, so they can yeah, sign up great. for TechSoup and take advantage of this technology. Yes. Yeah, not yes. just... It's not going anywhere. Yeah. It is here to stay. Everything, donor management, QuickBooks, yeah. everything, every Quick technology... Books. Quick. My wife's a quick, quick, QuickBook queen. Yeah, all of that is... <laughs> all te with TechSoup, all How of that. How long have you been using QuickBooks? Oh, God, when they had the DOS 
and stuff backspace wow way back then wow and she goes and she's an update with the right quickbook mm -hmm. quickbooks have run our entire ministry wow yeah. that's one of the well, platforms that through quickbook you can also use donor perfect um it, it'll merge with that and that's a really good data but quickbooks has everything too you can do your mm -hmm. donation letters all that through quickbook yeah. as well but this is but it's just good to see you as an African American mm -hmm. able to have this kind of conversation yes. yeah. because a lot of churches do not have the technology and because of that they're rushing back into the brick and mortar yes which i think is going to be a travesty for this cuz when this next wave coming is is we see what's happening in India we see what's happening in Brazil mm -hmm. and and these are happening in a lot of countries mm -hmm. that are technology deprived, you know, people still got to go in the marketplace, they're still changing cash and yeah. all this type of stuff, mm -hmm. which means that African Americans are put on the front line when it comes to work. Mm -hmm. wow. that's we are true. in the, that's, that's the cash system. Cash system. That's, we are the front line workers, we're in the hospitals, mm -hmm. we're the one that's, you know, right. we're all doing the day to day, you know, right. you go you go to the, 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 the restaurant. The, um, the clerks, you know, we are the frontline workers. Wow. We are the ones that are exchanging hands or exchange, yes. while others have the privilege of social distancing. Yeah, that's true. We don't have the technology, and we're not educated enough in the technology that I forgot what the percentage was, but I think it was like, it was like maybe 40% of whites, but only 20% of blacks have the privilege mm of social distancing. Social distancing wow. is a privilege. Wow, wow. It's a privilege. I mean, I flew down here in a, in, in a private jet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I didn't want to be in the airport, mm -hmm. right? And I needed to make a couple of stops in these German. That was a, that's a privilege. Yes. But I'm also aware that everyone does not have that, that privilege. And so what do you do? And one of the things that we may also be finding out is that black privilege mm -hmm. may become our greatest threat than colonialization. Back to that again. You know, yes, indeed. Right within our yes. own people. Yes. Wow. That keeps the race down mm. so that they do not know how to rise above, as Dr. Proctor would say, above the scratch line. Wow. 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 So when we're put in these positions, we, you know, it's time for us to become responsible. Wow. And I always try, I know my wife gets on me sometimes, I always try to bring people into accessibility mm -hmm. to begin to see things and experience life at another, you know, through another lens. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a quick, you know, like, come follow me. Come mm -hmm. on, a, come on, a Aretha Simons. Come on, join the coaching program. You need to get into Georgia Pride. How much is it again? Uh, 35,000, I don't know yet. Come on and make the stretch. But then you turned around and made that stretch yes. and that step of faith. Yes. And you were working that program and look at the timing mm. of how you stepped into this. You had your coach, you had a person you were talking to, you had the overwhelming amount of work, you were working on your business plan, you were going in one direction. Boom. Mm -hmm. And that's where it happens. Yes. All of a sudden, over here, this happens. So wait a minute. I was training to wash cars ha! and paint fences. No, no, no. You were training for a fight that you were going to wow. the arena with. Wow. And that's the way the coaching program. It's hard for me to explain to people. I said, you just got to trust me. Yeah. One of the yeah. persons that are in our coaching program ended up with a, um, a contract. They were like down past their last. And this was after they had given the... 35 grand, they'll tell their own story. Mm. And they ended up being awarded a contract for like 1.3 million. Wow, wow. Out of, watch this, out of a connection of someone that they met in the military mm -hmm. some years ago that says, you're doing what, what? Almost like your story. Well, we can use you over here. What, what, boom, boom, A, B, yes. here, yes. C, yes. Wow. the check. Wow. These are these type of stories. Um, yes. There's another testimony that's gonna come from someone else too that is working on something that will bring um, hundreds of millions of dollars to mm. them. But these are the kind of 
miracles. Um, Larry Reed's a walking miracle. Yes, indeed. I remember he couldn't even, um, I remember when his children was coming to stay with him, he was in one bedroom. And I know because I went and visited him. Wow. He was in a one bedroom. And, um, it, and what God. What God. it was a one bedroom. And he says they're on their way. He says, I don't even have a bed for them to sleep in, and I don't have the money to buy beds for them. Wow. And I remember I says, we're going to believe the Lord. And someone, he says, Bishop, you hmm. never guess what happened. Right? <laughs> someone purchased the bedding for our children. Jesus. Now I need a place to move to get it. And I watched from the time we met him. I was at every one of his places. I watched the growth. Mm, I watched Jesus. him take the leap of faith. I remember when he took the pledge thank card Jesus. for the thirty-five thousand. I said, "I'm mm. doing." I'm, I'm, I said, "How are you going to do that?" He says, "I don't know." He says, "It's by faith." Wow. It was nowhere in sight. Wow. And to look at him. The, to, to look at what God has done with him now, with all of you that's in the coaching mm -hmm. program. I don't know anybody who just had $35,000 laying around. We all did it by faith. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. this is really something. Yeah. Uh, we need to get my computer plugged up there, it's running Nathan. Badly, running and it's going to cut off in two seconds. So we want to thank all of you, and thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, of course, you, Doctor Aretha. Doctor Prophetess, I'll take them all. Aretha Simons. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go to this announcement. God bless you. We'll be right back. To keep in touch with Master Prophet E. Bernard Jordan, go to www.bishopjordan.com and follow him on all social media platforms. To get more information about the Prophetology Conference and or more special events go to www.zoeministries.com or call 888-831-0434. Thank you and stay blessed.